So the next thing that we're going to look at is how to write files. And we're going to look first just at writing basic data into files. And then serialization, which is a fancy term that basically means saving data structures like lists and writing them out into files and then being able to read that back in. So instead of having to say reprocess a CSV every time uh, you are done with it and want to write it out, you can just write your lists out, read your list back in and have them in the right format. So let's start with just basic file output. How do you open a file and write something out into it? So we're going to do F for file, just like we did before, and open along with our file name, and we're just going to call this testout.txt. So, so far this looks just like the example that we already did, um, and if we close this off here, this would open the file testout.txt for us to read, and it would give us f as the variable to use to read that. Instead, we're going to add in the second argument w for write. You can also put an R in there for read. We didn't do that in the last example because that's the default. But if it helps you to know if you're reading or writing to a file to have that explicit, you could put the R. If you put the W, that means you have a file for writing. Then after that, you can do f.write, hello world. And then you absolutely have to do f.close here. If you don't close a file when you're writing into it, um, the file basically never gets saved. And so that f.close is really important when you're doing writing. Let's save this as file output.py. We will flip over here to run that. Now, nothing prints out here because we didn't tell anything to print. Uh, we wrote out to the file, and if we list, the text files that are in here, uh, you can see we have testout.txt. Uh, if you're working on a Windows computer, you would use the command dir instead of ls. Um, you can also just look at it in your finder or whatever your file browser is. But our file testout.txt is there. Um, if I use the command more here, it shows us that that file has exactly what we said should be in there. Um, we can also open it here and we can see that it says the right thing. So that's good. Uh, let's try it again. And instead of writing hello world, just to show you that it's working, we'll say this is my first output. Save that. Run the script again. And now if we look at the file again, you can see it's overwritten what was in there. And it says, hello world, this is my first output. So the hello world that was in there before, that got overwritten by the current line that we're writing, which you can see is hello world, this is my first output. So when you're writing to a file and your type is w for write, it's going to start a new file every time. And if that file already exists, it's going to overwrite it. This is extremely important to keep in mind because it doesn't give you a warning or an error or be like, hey, just so you know that file already exists. It just writes out into whatever file name you gave it. And I cannot tell you how many times I have overwritten data because I thought it was going to stick it onto the end or I forgot that that file name existed. So you really want to be very careful with this uh, because it will just overwrite whatever's there, even if it's a file that took you months to put together. If you want to avoid that happening, or in a lot of cases, you'll want to actually just add on to a file, like if you're logging information, you can change this type to A for append. Um, and so if we did that, and we could say some other phrase, rerun our script, and then look at our file, uh, you can see that it appended on to the end today is great. It didn't overwrite the other line. And so uh, append is safer. You can still screw up a file if you're not paying attention to the file names, but it's not going to obliterate a file that's there. Um, and so you just want to think about what's the right one. Sometimes you do want to get rid of what was there and just write over it. Um, but W for write, including overwrite, and A for append onto an existing file. Um, these files don't have to exist, either if you're using W or A. Python will create the file for you if it's um, 
if the file doesn't already exist. Okay, so what I'm going to do is copy over our previous example on how to read from files. I'm just going to paste that into our new file here because essentially we're going to work with some of this data again. So I'll comment out these examples at the top um, just so you have those. And so now we have all the code that we just wrote in the previous video for opening that S&P 500 data, looping through it, and computing the average. So now instead of printing out the year and the average, let's write that into a file. So uh, we can't do f equals open, let's say, sp average dot text because we already have a variable f on the previous line. And so uh, just like any variable, these names need to be unique. And so we'll call this one f out. Um, for our output, so it's opening that, we have to do the write or append at the end. Um, I'm going to use write because I'm just going to write it all out and then close it when I'm done. And then instead of printing here, I'm going to do f dot write all of this text. Now this is not going to end up the way we expect, so we're going to have to come back in here and fix this, but we'll just try it like this for now. Um, and I made a little typo, this should be f out, we're writing out. Um, and then I'm going to, at the end, do fout.close, so I've closed that file. So now when I run this script, uh, it's going to open that SNP data. It's going to create a handle for us to write out into this new file, spaverage.txt. Instead of printing to the screen like we were doing before, we're going to do fout.write of that string, and then we're going to close both files. All right, so let's run this. Doesn't print anything, and again, that's correct because we don't have a print statement in here anywhere. Uh, all we're doing is writing out. So let's open that new file that we just made, spaverage.txt. Let me make that a little bigger so we can really see what's going on. So we have just everything all in a row. Year colon 6.0 and then you can see here's the next year 1958 colon 46 point a whole bunch of stuff and here's 1959. So everything is just getting stuck together on the same line. When we were using the print statement before, the print statement in Python automatically puts everything on its own line. That is not the case when you're writing out to files. So if we want to get everything on its own line, we have to concatenate on a new line, which is a backslash n, and that's just a line break that goes at the end of the line. If you remember in the previous video on reading files, we could actually see that new line when we printed out the data from sp.csv when we read it for the first time. So now when we write out to the file, we do the year, colon, the average, and then a new line, so everything should appear on its own line. I'm going to rerun this. Uh, since my type here is W, it's going to overwrite that existing file. So right now it looks like this, but this is all going to get overwritten because of that W, which is what I want. So let's flip back and rewrite it. Again, no errors, but nothing gets printed out. And if I switch back here and look, now my file looks exactly like I want. So instead of printing to the screen, I'm able to print this into a file, which is great. Um, and this is something that you're going to do all the time is process data and then write it out into some useful format uh, into a file. So the final thing that we're going to talk about in this lecture is instead of just writing out this, uh, these strings, which gives us some nice human readable text, how would we write out something like saving this array, m2? Right now we could print it out with commas in between and have a CSV, a comma separated values file, read it back in later, and then do this whole process of reading the file, looping through it, um, splitting it, doing whatever we have to do and putting it back into the array, I'm sorry, into the list, but there's a better way to do that, and that's with serialization. So to serialize things in Python, we're going to use this package called pickle. So we're going to import pickle, and pickling is when you take a data structure and you basically store it up and stick it into a file. Um, so we're going to import that at the top line and then for our code down here uh, we're still going to be writing out to this file and we'll keep the file name the same for now. 
Uh, the one thing that we have to change is instead of just writing, we have to do WB. That means write, and the B is for binary, because we're going to be writing out these like weirdly stored data structures in a binary format. They're not going to look like text, and so we need to say that we're writing out as binary. All the rest of this can stay the same. And then instead of printing out these averages, like this part down here, this average and this uh, file out writing, we're not going to do that because instead of writing out text here, we just want to save uh, our array, our list, M2. And so instead of doing that average and printing it out, we basically want to say stick M2 as it is with like the correct types and everything into a file. And so to do that, we do pickle dot dump, and then we have the data structure that we want to write out and the file handle. So this says basically dump out to the file M2, this is the file handle, and this is all part of something provided in the pickle package. When we're done, we keep that F out dot close. Now if we save this and we run it, We get nothing showing up here, again, because we're not printing anything out. But if we come back and check the file, here's what it looks like. Uh, so we've written a bunch of binary stuff out there. Totally not useful to us as human beings. But this has stored all of our lists in it. Um, so just to be clear here, what we've done is just what we were doing before. We're going through our file sp.csv. For every year, we're reading in the line, splitting it up. Uh, turning the month averages, uh, the monthly closing numbers into floating point numbers, and that's stored in this array M2. And then we're going to write that out into our file with this package pickle. Now, uh, if we want to see that working, let's actually open a new file. And we'll make that text big enough so you all can read it. Uh, and in this file, we're going to read back in that data. So we need to do, uh, to open that file, so we're going to call this f equals open. The name of our file is still spaverage.txt. And then we're going to do rb. Remember, r is for reading, and we still need that b for binary. We're also going to import pickle here. And now what we want to do is loop through that file. And instead of reading in a line of text like we did over here with read line, we're going to basically grab and load the data that was pickled and stored there. So let's save this as read pickle.py. That'll get us some nice color coding. Now, the way we had done this before, and we're going to start doing it this way for now, is to say while true and then in here we're going to do all of our stuff and then at the end we're going to do f dot close. Um, I like to put those opens and closes in at the same time when I'm working with files because I often tend to forget the close if I don't do that. Um, okay so we're opening the file and then while true we're going to read in the next line. I'm going to move that over so we have more space. So we'll say uh, so uh, we're using this command pickle.load, and we're going to put our file handle in there for f. And the result is going to be stored in m. So that's just going to be an array. I'm sorry, a list. Um, it's our month list that we had before. We were calling it m2 in the previous file. Here we're just going to call it m for short. So we do pickle.load of f, and that's going to load up the first binary object in the file f. It's going to store it in m we could then print m. And then in the loop, it's going to go back and loop again. It's going to load up the next binary object until it goes through all of them. So let's take a look at this running. Uh, now we're going to change our file name here to read pickle.py. Run it. OK, so nothing printed out. So that clearly means we have an error in here somewhere because uh, it should be printing stuff out. So let's take a look at what we've got. Um, so we're opening this. Let's, and here's how I debug. Let's just print out F there to see if that works. 
Oh, so I probably didn't save the file before because now it works fine. It looks like. So let's get rid of that. Okay, so we run it and it's looking great. What we have here clearly are our lists with the square brackets. We have the numbers without the quotes like we did the conversion of in, uh, in the first lecture on reading files. So everything looks great. We've got all of our items back. Um, there's a weird thing going on at the end here which we're going to ignore for now. And just to show that we can work with those, instead of printing M, um, let's do the averaging like we did before. So we're going to print the sum of M over the length of M. Now we didn't save the years, so we're not going to print those here. This is just to show that we can store those lists. So we'll print that average and try it one more time. And that's working great. So we see we can do the math with them. That data structure of a list got written out to the file with the pickle command and then we were able to read it back in with pickle.load. So instead of doing f.readline like we did to read in text from a file, we do pickle.load to load up um, a stored data structure. Now, uh, we still have this business to deal with at the end down here. So uh, it basically says, I ran out of input. Like you kept trying to read stuff with this infinite loop and there's nothing left for me to read. So what we're gonna do here is add in a try and accept. Uh, this may be something that you've seen before, we're going to cover it repeatedly throughout the term if it's something that's new to you. So what we're going to say here is try and then these two things. So this is a block that gets indented. Basically you do everything after the colon that's indented. And it basically says try to do that, but you might get an error, which is exactly what we were getting uh, when we ran the code. We were getting that end of file error. And so if you get an error like that, instead of kind of failing miserably and printing out that error and not getting to the rest of the code, we're going to say, hey, I know how to deal with that error. And so to do this, you use the word accept, which means there was an exception, there was an error, and you try to uh, figure out whatever that error might be that you'll get. In this case, it's an end of file error, EOF error. And if we get one of those, we're just going to say break, which means break out of this loop. So we kind of had that in our previous example. If we flip back over here, um, we had this, you know, if we read in a blank line, then do the break. We're essentially doing that here, um, but it's instead of saying, if we read in a blank, blank, sorry, if we read in a blank line, then break, we're going to say, if we get the exception that's an end of file error, then we're gonna break. But to catch that exception, we have to have a try block. So we're gonna try to do this if we get an exception that says end of file, then we're going to break. And so that handles that exception for us, and so the program doesn't just quit on us. So if we save this now and come back and run it again, now it works perfectly, and uh, we don't have any weird errors down at the bottom. So there's a few new pieces of syntax there, but the important thing that you want to look at between these two examples is using this pickle command. So pickle.dump takes a data structure, in this case the list in M2, and it writes it out in a binary format to the file given by this file handle. In this case that's fout, which is this text file that we're writing to in binary format. Then you could do it in the same file, you could do it in another file. You can open that file where you wrote out the pickled data. You can read that in in a binary format format. And then instead of doing read line, like we did with a plain text file, you do pickle.load from the file and that will read one pickled data structure at a time, which then you can store in a variable. And that variable gets all the properties of the data structure you wrote out. Everything has the right type. It's not text. It's like a proper data structure. And so you can create these kind of complex data structures, much more complicated than this actually, write those out into a file, and then read them back in without having to redo a lot of complicated parsing like we had to do here when we were just reading from plain text. So pickling is something we're going to be doing tons of for the rest of the term, uh, but this hopefully is a good introduction for you and, uh, and allows you to get some initial practice.